taking the op amp inverting summing amplifier that I already simulated with two inputs on it, I've reassigned it to give a clock from a 555 and a divide by two from a flip flop. And I've simulated the two inputs getting mixed and coming out of the op amp. This is all about generating a tone at a certain frequency and then generating another tone, half of that frequency, and getting a tone one octave down, and then trying to mix them together and see what we get out. Having learned of the concept of changing the octave of a note by changing the multiple interval of the frequency, so divide the frequency by two, the octave goes down one, multiply the frequency by two, the octave goes up one, I wanted to build a 555 oscillator at a certain top level frequency that I can then divide down with flip-flops. On Wikipedia, a list of piano frequencies for the notes. It's not the cleanest, easy to decipher chart I've ever seen for this. And I don't know enough about music, but let's just go with A because it's nice round numbers and it is highlighted here on the chart. So if we take an A, they're calling this note A4, I don't know what that means. A is at 440 hertz, so A4. If you go down to the next A in the chart, it's A3, and it's 220 hertz, half of 440 frequency. If you go down again to the next lowest A for A2, it is 110 hertz, half of the 220. So every time you take a certain note, divide the frequency by two, you go down an octave for the note. So 440, the next A up from A4 would be A5 at 880 hertz, and here it is. A5, 880 hertz. So what's the point of all that? Well, if you're going to use oscillators to make different sounds that combine together and sound musically relevant, you can use things like this to figure out the frequencies. So if I made an oscillator that happened to be 1.76 kilohertz, that's a certain A note. If I use a flip-flop and clock it with this, then the Q output is going to give me half of this frequency, or 880, which is the next A note down. If I take another flip-flop and take this frequency, I'm going to clock that, and my Q output is going to be half of that frequency, which is 440, or A4. So what does all this sound like? Well, I found another website. Virtualpiano.net has this keyboard. Now, I don't know where to find an A, but I know that C, I think, at least, C is before those two black ones. I like this keyboard because it has a sustain on it, so if I hit one note, it'll be still ringing out and I can hit the next one and see how it meshes. So if you just hit two notes that aren't really part of a chord, it may not sound like it's resonating well. But if you hit a note that belongs in a proper chord, then it does sound like it belongs together. So if you just go an octave up from this C, then it will be the C before the next two and the C before the next two black ones. And they make musical sounding sense together. Some stuff might sound weird and it might make sense to a weird jazz chord, I don't know. You can just try to make stuff up. Like, I don't know if that belongs in a horror film, but... If we can take a higher frequency oscillator, like whatever this frequency is, and divide it down with a flip-flop, and then divide that again with a flip-flop, and then throw those into an op-amp mixer, I wonder what'll happen. So I wanted to start simulating this, beginning with a 555 oscillator. Out of all the online 555 timer calculators, most of them kind of want you to do something like choose a resistor value and then choose other resistor and capacitor values and it'll tell you the frequency. But I just want to get something like, say, an 880 hertz A note 
and I want the calculator to tell me, okay, what do I need to do to make that happen? So I found this House of Jeff link, and if you just search Google for House of Jeff 555 timer calculator, you'll probably come straight to here. The thing I like about this, what frequency do you want? Well, if I want an A note at 880 hertz, and I say go, so R1, R2, and C1 are the timing components. Well, here's a whole list of combinations that will get me in the ballpark of 880 hertz. So for my purposes, that's fine. Now, depending what I want, if I want something really close to 880, then maybe I would go with something like this, 882 hertz, and I would choose 0 0.047 micro, 27K, 3.9K, and my duty cycle will be 88.8%. For generating a simple tone, maybe the duty cycle doesn't matter, but if I wanted more of a square wave, maybe I want to get something closer to 50% duty. So here's a 56.8% and a couple of others. So then do I like these values? A 0 0.047 micro, 4.7K and 15K. I guess I could find these parts. 0.1 micro and things like 0.01 micro are a lot easier to find usually. So 0.01, a 1K is pretty easy to find and I probably can get an 82 or I can add some resistors together and that's going to give me a nice almost perfect square wave. It's not quite up to 880 hertz, it's about five and a half hertz away, but we're not trying to make a keyboard, we're just trying to make a sound and then divide it down. Whatever the frequency is, it should have octave down when I divide it. So first I want to simulate this. Now I know R1, the top resistor, is 1K. R2 is 82K. C1 is 0 0.01 micro. Now I've already penciled in a string of flip-flops. If I use a 555, generate a clock out at 880 Hz, feed it into the first flip-flop, then the Q output is going to be half of 880. So this is going to be 440 hertz. So hooking the flip-flops up this way, it's basically building a counter. And you take the Q bar output, feed it back into the data. So every time you clock the flip-flop, the output is going to go high, low, high, low. It's just going to keep changing back and forth at half of the frequency that's clocking. So if you take this Q naught, and it's already half of the frequency of the main clock, you use this to clock another flip-flop, then its Q output and Q bar are going to go at half of this frequency. So incoming 880 Hz, Q0 is going to be 440 Hz, Q1 is going to be 220 Hz, Q2 is going to be 110 Hz, and if I kept adding, I'd keep dividing. So that's why I wanted the 555 circuit to generate the highest frequency that I'm interested in, and then I can just divide it down, and this is going to give me an octave lower each stage. So I need to build the 555 clock. Now in the draft menu, component, so in the miscellaneous component menu, at least on the Mac, they have NE555, an idealized timer model. So there it is. If I place that in, that should be a nice to work with chip. I want to build this, and so I'll start by adding a wire to the out, give it a net name of clock. So now this clock will be connected to the clock in of my string of dividers. Now I'll just wire the rest of this thing up without boring you. So I think that's it. We have VCC tied to plus 9 over here on the op amp. The output has the clock here, and the clock should go into here. So I wonder, can I simulate this, or did I make a mistake and it's going to give an error? Since the 555 is running on 9 volts, we are getting a square wave between 0 and 9, 
and it is about a 50% looking duty cycle as it was supposed to be. Now these flip-flops, Q0 is red, it's only swinging to one volt. I think this is just a generic model as well. I'm not sure how it figures out what voltage, but I just want a behavioral model. So we can see intuitively you have a full square wave cycle here, another full square wave cycle here for the clock, etc. And the Q output is half as fast. So if I want cursors here to do measurements, if I left click on a signal name up here, a cursor appears and I can click and drag it. So let's check the frequency between some cycles of this clock. I click the name of the net again and I get my second cursor. So I put the two cursors here spanning one full cycle of the clock it's telling me I'm about, I was targeting 880 hertz, knowing the actual resistor values, capacitor values are going to give me a little less. So this, I'm just roughly placing these cursors, and yeah, I'm close to 880 hertz. If I put the cursors between a cycle of the red, which is Q0, so I start here, then we go high, low, and then back to high, that's one cycle. Yeah, 435, which I'm just roughing this in, so that's close to 440, which is half of 880. Well, presumably, if I go now, Q1, Q2, it's going to be the red trace, Q0 divided by 2, so it's going to be 220, half of the 440, and Q2 is going to be half of 220, which is 110. So this shows that we have simulated our 555 oscillator at 880 or so hertz and a bunch of octave dividers. Let me try mixing the main clock with this Q0. Now knowing we have a 9 volt out here and a 1 volt out here, I'm not sure what to do about that, but let's just mix it anyway, who cares? So I'm not going to use sine waves on this op amp mixer. I'm going to put clock and Q0. Clock. If I just put this here, it updates it. Okay. And then Q0. Net name. So now I'm going to have the 555 clock out at 9 volts and ground, and Q0, half of the frequency, clocking out at 1 volt and ground. I could scale this resistor if I wanted to bring these up similar to each other, but let's just see what happens. So this stuff is all kind of in the way. I'd like to be able to have it all lined up and put the simulation window down here. So right click menu, edit, move or drag. What's the difference? Drag. So I get to select an area and drag it. Escape and run the simulation. So, since I changed the circuit and dragged things around, it wants me to tell it what do I want to probe. So I come back, I want V out from the mixer, and the two inputs I am mixing would be clock at 880 Hz and Q0 at 440 Hz, one octave down. Now I run the simulation again. There's the result, so let's see if it makes sense. We already know the clock is 880 hertz or so. Let me change this color again. Cyan. So cyan is my main clock, and it's... Ooh, we have negatives because we have the op-amp swing. So ground is in the middle. The 555 V clock is swinging between 0 and 9, and we already know it's 880 hertz. So the red trace is Q0, which is divided by 2. We already measured that. It's around 440 hertz. Here it is going between 0 and 1 volt. Now the op amp is inverting, and it should be mixing these together. So in this case, the op amp output is maxing out at minus 8, when we really would expect minus 9. I guess because we're trying to hit the rail of minus 9, and this op amp is going to have some offset. 
All we're looking for is the concept. So we have zero volts plus nine volts on the op amp inputs, zero plus nine, and then it gets inverted. We expect minus nine out, but we're capped at minus eight. So we see minus eight. And over here, where the 555 is low and the Q output is also low, zero plus zero, and you take the negative of that, it's gonna be zero. So the op amp output, which is green, goes up to zero. Now over here, where these two frequencies, 880 hertz and 440 hertz overlap, you have a period where you have zero volts plus one volt, and then that gets inverted to a negative one volt. So the op amp gives you negative one out. So you have the op amp following the main 880 hertz V clock, but it does a little bit of in-between signal stepping when the divided down clock interacts a certain way. So the output waveform is a little bit funky and should contain 80 hertz components and 440 hertz components. When we mix this together, we should get a bit of a complex output. So the next step is I'm going to want to try to build this and see what happens. If I mix 880 and 440 hertz, do I actually hear both of those tones when I put it through this kind of an op amp mixer?